Is it Giannis or is it LeBron? The real MVP of the season and what could make or break the return of the NBA is something that's never even stepped foot on the court or seen a basketball. I'm talking about the MVP of our immune system, the antibody. Welcome back everyone to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In this video, we're gonna review everything that's been going on through the NBA with what's happening in the world and talk about kind of where we are now and where we need to get to in order for the season to return. There's a lot to get through and overcome before thinking about the NBA returning, but there's one specific component of our immune system called an antibody that I really think could play a really crucial role in this whole process. Make sure you're subscribed if you like learning about this type of content and want to stay up to date with my future videos. And let's get started. I'm recording this just over two weeks since the NBA season was suspended, but it honestly has felt like it's been two months. I want to start off by looking at where we are kind of currently with the infection around the NBA. This, of course, all started with Rudy Gobert testing positive on March 11th, followed shortly thereafter by his teammate Donovan Mitchell from a test around that same day. A few days later on the 14th, we saw Christian Wood and Marcus Smart test positive. Then on the 17th, members of the Brooklyn Nets, including Kevin Durant. And finally on the 19th, two players from the Lakers, as well as three members of the 76ers organization and one member from the Denver Nuggets also tested positive. Now, we heard earlier this week that Christian Wood had a negative test result and that Donovan Mitchell is recovered and no longer infectious. And we're getting to that kind of 14 day period for the general recovery. For most cases where people have mild symptoms, the recovery seems to be about 14 days. And that's the common time frame that people are given to self isolate and quarantine themselves. We're approaching that time period even for those two players on the Lakers where they should be theoretically recovered and done with this illness. This also means though that if somebody were to test positive today or tomorrow, we're far enough out from those initial players testing positive that this would likely be unrelated to something within the NBA community. The rough timeline that's been thrown out around the NBA is that the season would need to finish by around Labor Day or the beginning of September. This would mean that games would need to resume around the beginning of July and then practice facilities would have to open up earlier in June. There's obviously so many logistics here about where they would play, who would be there, kind of travel, all that. But from a medical standpoint, there's two key things that need to be figured out before we can talk about resuming games. The first is we need to be able to identify people who actively currently have the infection. And we also need a way to identify people who have had the infection but are now recovered and theoretically immune. First off for active infection, we do this by testing for the virus itself. We take a cotton swab and put it up in the nose back to an area called the nasal pharynx kind of rub it around in that area and then run a test on that material that looks specifically for the genetic RNA components of that specific virus. This test is not 100% perfect, but it can reliably be used if you're trying to determine or screen players who might currently have the infection before putting them in quarantine for something like the return of the season. The next question though is how do we identify people who were previously infected, but have now recovered. After you recover from this illness, your body has essentially cleared the virus. And so that test with the Q-tip up in the nose is no longer going to be effective at identifying the infection. Here we have to rely on the function of our body's immune system and the role of antibodies. Our immune system has two kind of general responses. There's one that's basically nonspecific, very broad, kind of more chaotic, so to speak that is triggered right away. It's the initial response. But we also have a more tailored and specific response where antibodies come into play. Antibodies are these small Y-shaped proteins that are specifically encoded to recognize one specific bacteria or one specific virus. When our body is first exposed to a completely new virus or bacteria, part of our immune system cells generate these antibodies to specifically be more effective at identifying and clearing that new specific infection. Some of these antibodies just cover the immune cells themselves and others are secreted out into the bloodstream to sort of hone throughout the body and look for that infection. These are also called immunoglobulins and we abbreviate them with an I and a G and then another letter corresponding to the specific subtype. The nice part is when our immune system generates these antibodies, it also makes so-called memory cells 
that are able to remember that specific infection and remember sort of the sequence of producing that antibody. This is the primary concept of how vaccines work. For example, with the flu each year, our body is exposed to a new specific strain of the flu, and that causes our immune system to generate these antibodies and generate these memory immune cells that can then produce that antibody if we get re-exposed to that flu later in the year. So if we went and took a blood sample from Rudy Gobert or Kevin Durant, we could do a specific test to look for these antibodies that told us that they had had the infection and were now theoretically immune. The hard part we don't know yet about this new virus is how long that immune period lasts. In some infections, it's very long and can be lifelong, but in others, it can be short. So that's something we still have to research and answer to know how long somebody has immunity. The other time this antibody test is helpful is, remember there's a huge percentage of people who are infected with the virus, but really never show any symptoms and never get tested. This test sort of lets us have like a time machine to go back and tell whether or not people had the infection to know if they're now immune. This test is currently available and is gonna be a very important role in getting our community and getting people back to work by identifying who is now theoretically immune. So we can identify people who actively have the infection and now we can also identify people who previously had it, but are now hopefully immune to it. I'm sure this is something that would be done within the NBA when they're talking about resuming the season to know who is theoretically safe from getting the infection again. This will help them have a better sense of how widespread the infection has been and help them with balancing the risks of getting all these players back together. If you find out that a huge percentage is now immune because they've already had the infection, that can make you feel safer and more reassured about starting the season. But if you find out that almost nobody is immune to this, then you're gonna have more hesitations and have to implement more safety measures before we're starting the season. The antibodies can also have a very important role in trying to prevent people from getting the infection. There's research being done right now to take the antibodies from people who have recovered from this illness and basically draw them out of the blood and transfuse them into healthy individuals who have not had the infection to kind of transfer the immune system from one person to another. This is being done on widespread research levels right now throughout the country and is something that we could realistically see as sort of a bridge to a vaccine for people who have yet to have the infection. It's possible this could be implemented throughout the country as well as in places like the NBA to confer some level of immunity and protection to people until we can have a vaccine that would allow those individuals to produce those antibodies on their own. Without a test for these antibodies, it would be nearly impossible to know who had already had the infection and who was protected from it going forward. They also unlock some really strong potentials for managing and sort of delaying the infection in people until we can have a vaccine. So they have a really, really powerful role and I really think could kind of be the MVP of our immune system in this whole discussion. Aside from all this though, there are so many other logistical challenges that make me think that a return of the NBA is pretty unlikely this year. I think it all comes down to how long the NBA is willing to wait before saying we're gonna cancel it or we're gonna resume things. So much stuff is going to change over the coming weeks to months between the spread of the infection through different parts of the country, development of tests, development of treatment. It's gonna be so different how we're managing this in the next month compared to where we are today. That means that three months from now, we're gonna be even kind of more equipped to manage than, than we are right now. If the NBA could wait to open practice facilities until August, there's a much better chance that we'll have a good system in place for safely managing this than there is if they have to open practice facilities in June. But then of course you run into the challenges of having enough time for an off season and so, it's really gonna come down to how long they can wait before saying the season needs to restart. And all this discussion about taking players to like the Bahamas or putting them in a warmer climate, logistically also just doesn't seem to make sense from a public health standpoint. You're gonna have hundreds of people that are essential to this, whether it's the players, the coaches, the medical staff, the athletic trainers, the production crews, the referees, those players need to be fed, they need to have somewhere to sleep. It's a huge population of people that you're going to have to basically quarantine and isolate in one spot. Do you let the players interact with their families and their friends? How much outside world contact is there gonna be? In a perfect system, yeah, it might work, but all it's gonna take is one person to get infected, one exposure to somebody that's infected for the whole system to kind of come crashing down. I think the possibility of having fans in attendance this season is 
even lower just because of all these things we've talked about. Now you're talking about hundreds or thousands of people altogether. And the more people you add to this equation, the harder it is to control all of these individual little variables. I do think the possibility of like a charity game is definitely something that could happen because you could test enough players for this antibody to show immunity that you could then get those individuals together and feel pretty safe about nobody getting infected. But for the season to resume, I'd imagine it has to be an all or nothing thing. You can't have one team have to sit out because they have one player infected. It's gonna take everything going just right for this to happen. And the realist in me just doesn't know if it's logistically gonna be possible. I'll try to do more updates about all this along the ways we get more information. There's also a ton of implications here about the health of the players from an injury perspective. If the season does resume and all the things like players coming off of surgeries that could now be eligible, that we'll try to talk about in the future as well. But hopefully this video was helpful to kind of learn about some of these treatments and tests that are being developed, the role of antibodies in this whole equation, and just my general thoughts on the chances of the NBA returning this season. Thank you though as always for watching everybody. Let me know any questions or comments below. And until next time, we'll see you later.